Well, welcome everybody. It is April 3rd, 2019, and welcome to the Michael and David show. This uh, the show is actually a couple weeks in the making. We last got together two weeks. We were uh, uh, not able to hook up last week, so we've got two weeks of, uh, of things to cover, exciting things, and then as always, a little bit of knowledge and education to pass on for mm -hmm. our uh, soon-to-be many faithful viewers. So uh, yes. Our growing audience. Yes, our growing audience. So, and, uh, so welcome, Mr. James, and um, let's get the Michael James update from the last couple weeks. Yeah. So, real quick, I've been working with a uh, a company, and I can't really disclose certain details, but we have set up certain situations where we have actually created a problem with my infrastructure of my network and I actually have to simplify it down mm -hmm. and create three separate banking nodes as they call it and so I'm working with this company to create a new architecture within their own system mm -hmm. to bankroll mine because it is so different than a multi-level marketing company or any sort of referral or affiliate program currently running and um, so like when certain companies have ideas for these types of programs they come to these this company technically <laughs> and this company solves that problem and I'm at the situation where they said we can only go so deep uh, for us to go much deeper and create a deeper architecture we need to build a much deeper bigger platform here for you so I'm working on that. In uh, so the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of nerding out and reclusing into my room and coffee shops. And I have been problem solving so I can simplify this even more. Mm -hmm. And that's basically uh, what I've been doing. And then going to a lot of sales meetings. And then the last two weeks, like everyone's been calling our company for websites and marketing and social media stuff. So it's been really good. Nice. Uh, so I've just been kind of filtering that. and first quarter of the year seems to be pretty good so excellent 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 report well i will say on my end yeah i will say on my end that as i mentioned it's been a couple of weeks i had a an issue last week with uh, my younger son which prevented me from getting on our our weekly show so that hopefully will be getting resolved here in the meantime or sometime soon in the meantime um gosh kind of more of the same i had a i would say we always talk about having some education for the viewers and and as an example i put for me this time i'm going to talk about writing a book and for michael uh, monetizing the connections and then we'll have something of course for next week but the reason i bring it up is because one of the things i think is important to remember is just this concept and you've heard it many many times but i think it's so important to uh always be aware of this and that's just the value of patience and you hear patience is a virtue and you know nothing was built rome wasn't built overnight or you know built in a day and that kind of thing and the reason i bring this up is because i had a couple of speaking gigs that were a long time in the making but then on the other hand i had one and i confirmed with the guy on monday where am i speaking tuesday hmm. and he kind of misinformed me and says no i didn't i wasn't bringing you to speak i was just gonna have you be a guest at this rotary meeting and i said I, I said right here in the email where can i set up my book table and how much time do i have 30 minutes and all this is agreed on then he tells me no 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 it's just it's just a um uh, you just come to the meeting. So wherever the miscommunication was, I, I saw it in the email. So I, I don't really think I mistook what we were saying, but, but it was okay. And I thought, well, be patient. Don't worry about it. Don't judge him and so forth. And then, with some people. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but then as of today, I got, and for some reason for me, for speaking as, um, it's kind of like all the things you do, Michael with clients and social media and all these different websites and things like this. One of my big, um, benchmarks, if you will, is of course my keynotes or speaking gigs as we call them. And so today, about uh, one o'clock or so, I got a speaking gig in Little Rock, Arkansas. And oh. yeah, and I thought that was, it's a big uh, teaching, was it procurement company, um, 90 minute keynote in uh, September 30th for mm -hmm. about 250 people. And it's just, it's just neat. And the reason I bring that up for the group, for you and me, but also for the viewers, is because once again, 
I've been going through these same processes of getting my name out there as a speaker, the gratitude guy, and happiness starts with gratitude, and gratitude creates peak performance and a couple of the keynotes. And there's days that I've gotten very discouraged, and I've really just realized you've you got to go back to patience. And so I saw that today, and I looked at the screen, and here's the email that comes through. We picked you to be our speaker, and please get a hold of us and give us the, the contract and so on and so forth. And I really? thought, well, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it was really exciting but at the same time, I appreciated it at such a higher level because I've worked so hard to get there. And it just seems like so often the harder you work, the more you appreciate it when you do have success. And, mm -hmm. and it's just so easy, whether you're your age or my age, it doesn't matter what the age is. We all we live in a nanosecond world where everybody wants things today. And it doesn't work that way. So it was just one of those kind of high points today. And I had a chance. I knew we were getting together tonight. And, and uh, I was a little worried about my son, but at the same time, really happy about this speaking thing. And I think there's going to be a lot more to come because I market like crazy and I market in many, many different ways and venues and so forth to get speaking gigs. But I just thought, gosh, as I sat there and reflected on it, I just was so, so happy about the fact that I'd been patient. And, and yep. just knowing that, again, if you, the harder you work for something, the more you appreciate it. So that was really cool. And then in the meantime, a couple of coaching clients. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about writing a book. And I'm working on a book called The Six Word Book that I put a lot of time into today, too. But I'm going to touch on that when we get to our education piece. Uh, but again, just... Um, just a lot of patience and persistence and really sticking, you know, sticking with it. And it's just so easy to walk away, but um, so much more valuable when you stick with it. So that was, that kind of capsulates my last couple of weeks that it's been uh, uh, a lot of patience kind of paying off. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That'll be fun. You get to go travel and do your, your yeah. life purpose. Wow. Yeah. And get paid. That's a great deal. Exactly. And it's, and it's fun too, because like this is on a Monday. So I'll fly in like on a Sunday morning, uh, spend the day around little rock as an example, uh, sleep that spend that night there, then go into do the talk the next day and then come back Monday night. Cause the talk I think is at noon on Monday. And it's just, it's just really fun. And I'm learning on as I've gotten to places I remember, in my speaking career and again i go back to people that are starting out with anything you kind of start small and you just keep building but i remember it was, it was the very first one was san antonio in terms of out of town because mm -hmm. somebody says you're never a star in your own town so i guess <laughs> if I, if I live in seattle maybe if i go to bellingham i'm a star in bellingham but you know it's yeah. still not yeah. what but it was um san francisco <laughs> and San Diego and San Antonio and Minneapolis and then Hawaii, Honolulu and uh, Pensacola. And so it's just, it's starting to, to get momentum. And that's something that for me is my gauge of success. I always thought for some reason, whether it's right or wrong, I was going to gauge a lot of my success by how many out of town speaking gigs I was doing. Cause there's something that said, wait a second, if somebody's willing to pay your airfare plus your fee and your hotel, uh, to have you come to their town and talk, you must be doing something right. So, so it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you kind of got into the business for, I would imagine, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> that's and the dream never, setup. And it never, but I think Good you and I talked about this before too. It never goes as fast as you think it should. And yeah. I understand "should" is kind of a dangerous word, but you know, you have these sort of preconceived notions of how much time it should take to get to X or Y or Z. And so um, I think I've learned this advantage of my age certainly is that I just learned to let the process take the speed that it dictates. And you then, you know, back to the connecting the dots backwards, you'll later see why it took you some time. And a big part of that is appreciating it more. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of it is, you know, you can't do, you know, 10,000 speaking gigs a year. You can do, a hundred or you know mm -hmm. do it really well and have the energy to do a hundred next year or 150 or right kind exactly. of keep building upon a foundation exactly. and so, you know you get one this month the next month you get one and then you get two and then you know eventually you're gonna start building and then you know as these audiences start eating you up mm -hmm. they're gonna start being like hey hey and you're going to get referred and you're going to be all over the place pretty soon. Well, it's, and I think that's exactly right. And I sort of, even today, as I was reflected on it, I was just looking at my computer, just smiling as I saw the email. And I was thinking, you know, don't be surprised if this starts to open the floodgates. You know, just sometimes it just takes that one to Take kind that of open. 
Yeah, exactly. And there's, there is almost it. It's like karma or it's like the energy that's sent out. Law of attraction. Yeah, exactly. The law of attraction. You wanted these and you're now attracting these and you're allowing the time and the. Exactly. In fact, it makes me kind of think to ask, to ask you, if I look at, if you were to ask me, well, so tell me uh, again, as people watch what you and I talk about and listen to some of the things we hopefully uh, can help share our experiences is there, there's always several ways that you have profit centers or revenue streams or whatever. And mm -hmm. for me, it's always kind of been speaking is, is really the one I'm most passionate about. I love being in front of groups and spreading the message of gratitude. Uh, the coaching thing, which kind of came out of that and coaching people and having clients and helping them has been really, really good. Uh, mm -hmm. Building the online courses and then doing some of the books. And then I've got some group coaching and some things I'm going to do. But how would you characterize it, Michael, your sort of top one, two, three, four, five revenue streams in terms of which vehicles are the ones that you look at to kind of really bring your income, your revenue, if you will. Yeah. So, you know, in my business, I'm providing basically three services. So I'm doing website construction, SEO services on a monthly ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing social media services on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So my vehicles are, you know, I'm utilizing those platforms and, you know, how I'm getting paid is through like a PayPal wire transfer, something like that. It's very rarely a check anymore. Um, but you know, like the older, much older school clients that maybe aren't as set up, they'll send you a check, but it's again, very rare. Right. Um, uh, so for me, like I have a stream of revenue off websites. I have a stream of revenue off SEO every month. Um, because I know that, you know, say I have 10 clients paying, you know, $1,500 a piece, you know, I'm, ex you know, thinking that's going to keep rolling for three months, six months, a year out at least, you know, social media say it's the same thing. You know, those are separate contracts I consider because they're separate services. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about my business is when you're providing those three services, you're thinking in a much bigger perspective for the client because you're understanding their branding, which is the website, the foundation to their entire brand and business or organization. Right. Whether that's retail, online or nonprofit or what have you, that's your foundation. The SEO I would consider is the ranking and how people find you for the services and those things within the foundation or the business. Right. So if the business is a consulting coaching speaker and, you know, offers these books and classes and consulting, you know, those are the things that if I search Seattle, Bellevue, Kirkland, consulting services, consult, you know, business consultant, I'm hoping I'm going to find David Brooke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. Exactly. So then the, the third thing is the social media. And I consider this this consistent outreach. So social media, you're using all these different channels, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, blog, YouTube, uh, Zoom, and then you're sharing that piece of content to the internet right. through all of those channels. So you're taking it from here and then you're multiplying it. Mm -hmm. We're going to take this piece of content, put it on 10 things. Mm -hmm. So those are 10 different channels. So, you know, as far as monetization, I have like referrals coming in from sales people. I have referrals coming in from growth partner people providing websites and SEO services outside of what I do. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I have a referral stream of people that I send business and then get back stuff. And then I have my noggin, the three services, the websites, SEO. And so I have six technically, but I'm trying to create a lot more. So. Right. But what I think is so great about it, I just kind of jotted down websites, SEO, social media, is I think it's, an, it's another great message to our viewers, which is the more income streams you can create, the more diversity that you have. And diversity mm -hmm. protects against too many eggs in one basket, uh, mm -hmm. something happening in a certain area that maybe some aspect of things changes while well, it's not as relevant anymore that people need a website or whatever the example might be. And, and that's something that's really 
uh, it's made me really appreciate diversifying the revenue streams for me because uh, I was actually kind of put it in the form of, jo of a joke. I remember when I came home and I told Connor, who was who's now 24, but he was uh, 17. I said, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm, and he says, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to come up, become a speaker. And his famous line when he goes, well, that's just super dad. And, <laughs> and sitting on the couch. And the part I'm going to add now to the keynote when I tell that story is there's just one problem. Being a speaker is not a full-time job. So you know, it's like, it's a nice job, but it doesn't take <laughs> 40 hours a week so nice going dave you know so so that's why i think when i look at you with websites and all the seo and the social media and referral partners and this is it's so smart to have it's the, the only word i can think of is diversify and have a lot of eggs and a lot of different baskets because it is just one of the best business models you can develop and, and clearly you've done that so that's cool I mean, it's something I kind of foresaw in college, and it was something, I mean, I'm extremely passionate about this. It's I could care less about the money, but I want to prove something that I can see digitally. Like, I love to build Legos, and I love to landscape and, you know, build mountain bike and ski jumps. So you see something when you're done, mm -hmm. and you usually hit it or do something with it after. Right. Well, for me, like, I, I like to see a website like your website. Mm -hmm. And then I like to see every month the traffic go. <laughs> right. right. And then I love to see the likes and the comments and the shares. And I love to hear, hey, David's getting booked in Little Rock, Arkansas. Exactly. Like, exactly. That is the best thing to hear. So, yeah, yeah you know, that's really cool. Because it really is kind of like being the proud parent, you know, and having your child, you know, that, that <laughs> yeah. parents that are good parents <laughs> understand that totally. the success and happiness of their child is, is far more important than their own happiness. And, and I heard somebody say recently, as a parent, one of the really big things in life you want is your children to be happy. So it's the same thing about, I want to see Connor and Kyle do really well. And when they do well, both of which they are, it makes me really happy. But it's like one of your children. So it's yeah. the comments, it's the follow through, it's the, it's the, all the things, the interaction and the um, conversion that the website is creating and things like that, that really makes the proud papa, yeah. Mr. James, happy, which is cool. Yeah, so it's fun to see your energy and your drive behind like you yeah. going speaking and when i've seen you in front of the five thousand people at the military base like right. you kind of lit it up david it was amazing so i was you know i mean you kind of thrive in there and like god i'd love to see you do that a hundred times a year I mean, yeah exactly and it'll happen in just in just understanding the pace of how those things happen in fact it was interesting because i have to thank you for uh, I think it was some of the, I'm trying to think if there was the video that you did, you were watching the video at Joint Base Lewis McCord, but also some of the stills that you did because mm -hmm. those were incorporated into my speaker reel and that mm -hmm. speaker reel, uh, as far as I'm concerned, especially getting this Little Rock deal, the speaker reel, reel was a huge part of that. I only got that about six months ago and I remember when I first saw it, I, I, I almost got emotional because it was mm -hmm. so well done in, in all intersplicing all of these pieces of videos and not just a static thing of me at the podium speaking yeah. and, and really giving that sort of the highlight reel for lack of a better term so I think that's been really instrumental in helping me starting to get the gigs coming my way yeah it's um you know your energy when you show up like I think that is contagious yeah and people want to talk about it and share it and mm -hmm. you know when they read your books and you know work with you in a coaching or consulting situation like I mean they're going to tell their friends and be like hey David's amazing like, he's helping me out with all these things like <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I, you know, my clients do is they, they really like what I do. And so they, they talk it up. So well, and I think you're, you're creating really, this community where that's, that's building your presence in a much bigger way. Exactly. And, and you and I are very similar in terms of our energy. And I think that, you know, as I call myself that gratitude guy, gratitude is parts of every part of my life. And I'm so grateful to have the energy that I do. You know, you've got great energy. I'm, I'm approaching 70 and it just doesn't, nothing's going to slow me down. And so I feel very, again, very grateful to have that because I think some of it you can create yourself, but I think a lot of it's God given. And yeah. I think that it's just sort of in there and stuff too. So, well, let's, let's keep moving along. So we have, um, uh, for this week, we wanted to talk about, um, you're going to talk about monetizing the connections and we'll get to that in a second. And I think I'll kick off, uh, this week's, um, education piece, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. writing a book. And I'm in the midst of writing a book right now and I want to have the, the 
viewers, just give them a couple of tips on things that you can do. Uh, the, the book writing world really got changed substantially, I don't know, five or 10 years ago with self-publishing. And one of the most common, there's a number of them out there, but one of the most popular ones is Create Space, which is recently, which is an Amazon company, which was recently changed to Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP. And mm -hmm. I've done my gratitude journal and a number of books through there. But I, I want to encourage anybody that's watching this that wants to write a book uh, to not only not be intimidated, but to just to go down and, and dig in and, and do it. And going to Kindle Direct Publishing makes it extremely easy from some of the templates they have to how you pick a cover to how they edit it for you. Uh, there's there's places like Elance or um, what, what was who bought Elance or somebody bought them the other day. You can still get to them through Elance.com. They have all sorts mm -hmm. of services, including editing, copywriting, and things like that. And I just encourage people because I if I had a dime for every person that ever said I'm going to write a book, I think that it would be uh, I'd have a lot. I'd have a lot. They would have written your book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I would. Have, I would have a lot of dime. <laughs> but it's just I, I just want people to be just again, if you're watching this, to be the exception, be the person that actually does write the book and start it out with an outline and, and make a big outline of maybe 10 or 20 chapters. And then each chapter has maybe four or five different parts to it. And each one of those has um, some stories that are related to that, some concepts that you want to get across for whatever you're going to do with your book. But to really do it, because one of the reasons I feel very strongly about it is there's two things that I've done that I feel very fortunate. Uh, one is having been a pilot. And number two is having written a book and I've done several and I'll sit in a group or stand in a group rather. And just by the, through the course of my talk, I might say, how many people here have written a book? No, one pe person will raise their hand, maybe nobody out of 75, 80 people. How many people here are a pilot? Once in a while, maybe one hand will go up. And so I feel very, very blessed to have done those two things. But I just want to encourage people listening in that it's there's some great, great um, platforms out there. But this creates best space, uh, Kindle Direct Publishing, uh, is one of the best. And it's so user-friendly. So if you have a book in you and you know who you are that's listening or, or watching, uh, well, I'm going to write a book one of these days about my life or about this or that. Go out and do it. And uh, certainly, too, if you uh, want to connect with me at thatgratitudeguy at gmail.com, I'm happy to help because I always want to see new authors come on the scene. So uh, I highly encourage you to think about, if you've been thinking about writing a book, get out there and do it. And I'm happy to help, too. So. so that's my spiel on writing a book. And uh, you wanted to talk about monetizing the connection. Yeah. Now, real quick, David, when you and I met, had you written a book yet? Um, I'm trying to, I think I must have, because I thought I had I some. You did, yeah, because yeah. you had some there, yeah. I had some, oh, yeah. 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 You've just doubled since then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So last week, real quick, I did talk about the networking aspect, using your social channels and building communities. But mm -hmm. well, this week, I'm going to talk about monetizing those people. Mm -hmm. So as you're building those communities or those relationships through Facebook or Instagram or YouTube comments and followers. The idea is over time, when you have a bigger audience <laughs> and you have a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand followers or more, and then when you do the ask, hey, I've written a book. You have a pretty, uh, pretty hungry audience ready to chomp up whatever you've got. Mm -hmm. right. So in the process, like right now, you and I are creating this YouTube content or this content that we're going to be sharing across a lot of platforms. Mm -hmm. Over time, we're going to build an audience. Mm -hmm. Correct. Over time, we're going to offer something and we're going to have an active, engaged audience that's like ready to go because we've been giving them a bunch of free education a bunch of great advice great energy every wednesday they expect the michael and david show exactly so over time when we do the ask which isn't a lot but it's occasionally we have an active audience mm -hmm. then when we email or we do the call to action or the advertising and then when we do the well, the, the boosted posts or, you know, the more, you know, promoted type things, our audience is going to really help promote that organically. Right. right. Off of 
that because they've already liked and you know we have the community mm -hmm. when we do a boost at something those people out there that haven't liked it are going to see that oh my gosh there's 17,000 people that like david's content there's 5,000 followers and blah, 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 right they're going to want to join and be like wow what's this guy doing he must be doing something great excellent so that's a thing I'm thinking of. The other way is when you're sitting these, you know, or sorry, not sitting these people down. When you're emailing these people back and forth, over time you're gonna build a, a repertoire. You're gonna have the relationship going on. And then you're gonna say, hey, Bob, I notice you do landscaping. I notice you're a consultant. I notice you're a plumber or a screen printer, a web designer, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> XYZ and and then you're able to potentially offer refer business saying hey I've got these 3,000 people on my Facebook mm -hmm. or you know I got 300 people on LinkedIn exactly I, I could refer you maybe that guy or have do you know this guy in town mm -hmm. help people out nice. this is monetizing your network so that's my advice nice that's excellent that's excellent too and I was thinking as you said that too about just building the social media uh, followers, likes, or whatever it might be, and how I built the people that get my Monday morning video. Yeah, great example. Yeah, and it's just started out innocently enough. Just I'm just going to send out a video on, on gratitude, and then pretty soon it was – but yeah, and then it was three, it was two, then it was one minute and stuff, and it's just been really, really It's cool. consumable by a lot of people for in that, and you've created something that was easy, educational, and it gets them going start of the week. Exactly. And it was also too, in that one minute, as you just mentioned, is very critical because at one point it was three or four minutes and then it was two minutes for quite a while and then it was a minute. It's amazing how much you can get out in a minute. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll, I will speak pretty fast and I've always had good energy and things, but it, it goes back to that thing. If somebody sends you a video, I always get a kick out of this. And Michael, David, you have to see this video. The very <laughs> first thing most of us do is look in that lower right hand corner to see what it says. And if it says, 37.01 i'm sorry i don't have 37 minutes but i have a minute i do have a minute for that yeah. too so so that's great well let's do this i think um next week what i and then i'll see what you want to bring up for next week michael uh, i'm going to talk a little bit about work environment and i think really where you're your best um self if you will because i think about <clears throat> i'm in my condominium i think i'm a member of Columbia Tower Club, and there's a club there, and then I go to Starbucks, and I just want to talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons of how you create the most uh, effective work environment that really helps you to expand your creativity and make sure that you're, whether it's a headset that you're using, where this is placed, because mm -hmm. when you're talking about what you do, when you're talking about websites, you did a great website for me, for example, all the SEO, social media, there's a lot of creativity in there, is involved there, to say the least. Well, how do you create an environment that, fought, that really has that, fosters that flourishing creativity for your mind and keeps you focused on your computer screen or whatever? So that's what I'm going to talk about next week. And uh, what would you like to bring to the group next week? So this week was kind of monetizing your audience. Correct. Uh, next week, I'll talk about how you go online and you monetize your products or your services off of Facebook or oh, Etsy great. or an e-commerce type platform like WooCommerce or something off, you know, uh, WordPress or Wix or, you know, things people can set up overnight or very quickly at least. So Excellent. Okay, that's excellent. Cool. Well, um, I think that's going to be it for this week. We'll be back with you again on uh, next Wednesday, the 10th. Uh, any final thoughts for the audience, Mr. James? You know, energetically, like for me and certain people I've been around, it's it's been an, a weird energy for the last week or two. A lot of people have kind of had stomach problems and mm. like motivation and kind of getting started and so uh, it's been really interesting. Like I've noticed myself even battling like a oh, little depression and, you know, seasonal this and that. So like I've been trying to get out and, you know, just uh, play some happy music and just be in a positive mindset really helps. So. Good. Well, that's a, that's a great comment. And I will tell you from my standpoint, 
I always reference my age just because of how many days I've been on the planet. But I noticed it's such a combination. Of course, I don't miss a day with, without writing in my gratitude journal. But that seasonal affective disorder, sad thing they talk about that hits people in the Northwest and so forth. But I think about, for me, drinking that gallon of water, writing in that gratitude journal, hanging out with people like you, taking my vitamins, getting eight hours of sleep, getting the exercise, uh, trying to be creative every single day, being really aware of who your friendships are. They're either helping you or hurting you and make sure you're having ones that are either neutral or helping you. So just kind of a good formula for keeping you positive because when you're a creator such as you are, and I like to think I am, uh, it, it, it takes some, some good support around that to keep this, this body going forward and, and uh, mm -hmm. because you're right, those things, depression, anxiety, all overwhelm, those things can all hit us. And um, it kind of slows things down when you especially want to speed things up and keep going forward. So, so good yeah. advice. Good advice. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll uh, talk to you all next week. Take care. Have a good night. You bet.